Okay, March 19th, Sunday evening, just before the weekly close. Let's do the market outlook and plans for the week ahead. So um, we've got a big week ahead here. Um, we'll start off with the events because uh, it's going to be the focal point for the week. So we have FOMC on Wednesday. It's going to be the biggest FOMC um, that we've had in quite some time. Um, sparked off of the events that we've had with all the bank failures and stuff. Um, this is going to be a very, very important CPI. A lot of people are going to be reading very heavily into um, the language that Powell comes out and everything. So be anticipating some volatility. And um, it's probably going to lead to a buy the dip event. Um, I Almost regardless of which direction he goes, whether it's hawkish or bearish with his tone, I think that it probably will lead to volatility that we can end up buying. Um, so that's that for the news events. Uh, definitely want to be paying close attention to uh, Wednesday and uh, getting prepped for that. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the S&P. Um, quite surprising. Um, we've had some signs of life with the S&P. It's not quite... Um, forcing me to pivot to being bullish on it yet, um, but I am surprised that the 3900 level has um, looked like it's flipped, at least for now. Um, so if the bulls are able to flip the yearly VWAP, so basically a reclaim of 4K um, would uh, cause for targets towards 43 or 4400. Um, as long as the uh, price is trading below the yearly VWAP though, um, the target remains uh, 3600 or 35 and a half. Um, so I am quite surprised, um, but there, there's absolutely no reason to pivot just yet. It's still too early. Uh, so let's get into Bitcoin here. Um, let's start with some higher time frame stuff. Um, so let's talk about VWAPs. Um, so we have successfully started to trade above the previous year's VWAP, which was the last kind of line in the sand we had from VWAP structure. Um, so now we basically have the previous composites. Um, so the old um, 2021 comp and then um, the comp that we had built from last year, so 30K. Um, so 30K is the, the main you know region that we're watching now. Um, from a basic range standpoint, right, this is your range low. So if you reclaim this range low, you expect to trade up. Um, so let's talk about some of the psychology that's going on here. Um, so... You guys know I have this classic rule about we either want to front run or blast through levels. We don't want to just cleanly ever trade into them um, just because that's the way to cause max pain. Um, so what my thoughts are is that, um, you know, with how extreme this momentum has been to the upside, I don't think that we're going to, um, we're not going to dampen anytime soon. So I think we're probably going to blast through this 29, 30K region and um, watching how we interact into the, um, into the lower 30k region is going to be uh, very key. So basically, uh, my thoughts are my main my main thoughts are that we're probably going to blast through this, and then we'll probably see some sort of momentum loss um, up here, which will probably be a very significant local top, in my opinion. Um, alternatively, um, there could be some argument that we're you know that this is where the hedge is. Now, I don't like really like this hedge idea just because how strong this up move has been. Um, but because we have the FOMC, it is something that I am considering. Great. So yeah, basically thoughts are, I think that we'll continue to trade up. Um, any dips are for buying, you know, 26K is the obvious dip buying region because that's last year's VWAP. And there was definitely a lot of over other overlaps there as well. You know, um, TLDR is that we have FTA um, in the 28K region where we're at now. If this doesn't fail where we're at now, then we probably will be trading up towards the 32, 33K region. Um, with how strong momentum has been, I don't think that there's any um, reason to be looking to short things. Um, I will be somewhat eager to look for hedges this week going into FOMC. Um, and yeah, I think that we, we should be able to trade up still. For more information, check out the Paragon Group with the link below, where I cover everything from how I trade to how you can develop your own style. So that pretty much covers it for Bitcoin. Let's go ahead and get into altcoins. Um, so let's cover some of the strong altcoins first, and then we'll talk about some of the uh, ideas that I'm saying before I actually run through the altcoins. Basically, every there's three different stages of altcoin right now. Um, there is the upper bands. Um, the middle and the lower. Um, so basically every every altcoin is going to be falling into the categories where they're either the super strong altcoins um, like INJ that we'll see. Um, then there's some of these coins that are floating around in the middle and then there's some of these coins that are floating around at the lower bands. And basically 
Um, I wanted to cover this because you have the choice to what, what style do you want to play, right? So personally, you guys know I like to lean into whatever is currently strong um, and, and play the dips on those guys. So like INJ, right? Trading consistently above its bands. Um, something like BNB is another example of a really strong coin. Any of these coins that are trading in the middle like this um, are ones that I'm actually going to be looking to play this week probably. So I'll keep my eye on the really strong things, but I do like the idea of some of these coins that are in the middle like this. So, you know, um, Matic, Clay, Ocean, Link, any of these ones that are in the middle. Um, basically, the risk definition is so clean on them that um, as long as their lower time frame rewalk structure remains bullish, um, I think that there is a strong um, argument um, to be bidding. But yeah, so... These are our strongest altcoins, and these are the ones, you know, that I want to pay the most attention to. See, this, I don't even remember what this Korean coin is, but this is a one that I would love to bid. Um, I actually had a plan on this one to bid 27 last week, and I didn't, which I regret very much so right now because I missed a 50% trade. Just because I said, eh, I don't really feel like taking that when the alert went off. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to ramble too long on altcoins, but they're, you know, the, the core focus still should be Bitcoin in my opinion. ETH tried to take the reins for a tiny bit here um, this weekend, but that ended up being pretty short-lived. Um, so my core focus will still be longing Bitcoin um, until it cools down, um, but keeping an eye on what altcoins look good so that, you know, eventually that, that bid is going to shift over to altcoins. When it does, I want to be there ready to go um, and not be trying to play catch up with my plans and prep work and stuff. So, um... Yeah, I mean, the market's pretty hot right now. Um, the volatility is, you know, pretty extreme, you know, even on, on Bitcoin right now, you know, if you want to like intraday trade Bitcoin, which I plan to be doing a lot in between um, my prep work on some of my, you know, swing trades and stuff, I plan to be intraday trading Bitcoin a lot. Um, it's just so volatile right now. It's actually crazy how much it's moving. Um, so we really want to take advantage of this because we don't know how long it's going to last, right? It could last for several months from now it could last you know several years from now theoretically i don't you know i think that as we trade up into the 30s though that it will probably be entering the later stages of the trend and things will probably cool down following that uh last thing to cover is going to be content so. um, but yeah that's pretty much it so um good luck everybody this week stay on your toes because this fomc is going to be a spicy one cheers everyone